Hey guys, that's right, it's raining hard here in England, but we're not going to let that stop us, no, because we're going to get wet anyway. And why is that? Because it's time to clean the homemade filter. That means you get to see inside, I'm going to take the lids off, I'm going to drain it down, I'm going to pull out all of the internals, and you can see all the working parts, not that there are many. That means you can see why I think that building your own filter is cheaper, better, easier to maintain, than pretty much anything you can buy in the market. But you can be the judge. It's my opinion, I'm not telling you, I just want to show you. If you stay tuned, let's get to it. First things first, I'm just gonna fill up a standard old tub but with pond water, because I'm gonna clean the brushes in the pond water. Obviously not using tap water or anything like that, because I wanna maintain the microbiome. Now you'll notice the lids, I use paving slabs. And I just, well, I'll take them off and you'll see how I sort of slowly cemented around the edges just to give it enough rigidity. But I wanted this to look super clean. You know, this is all about having a beautiful space within which to enjoy, enjoy it. It's got, you know, it's got integral seating. It's all blue leas. It's about the whole experience, not just about the pond. So it had to look right. So I'll get them off now. My switch is on the external wall just there, so I'll just turn everything off, it's all labelled, pretty straightforward. I only clean this twice a year, albeit this pond's just coming up to about two years old, so I'm really interested to see, you know, how much stuff is in that filter, how much has been collected, how much is broken down, whether it's really crudded up and in bad condition because, you know, maybe I haven't been maintaining the pond properly and cleaning the filtration system properly, it's entirely possible, but let's take it apart. Let's have a look. Well, you can already see that the jack matting on the surface you know, is pretty good. There's a little bit of weed building up in that one. But not much, generally. That's in pretty good condition on both sides. Yeah, the game, pretty similar on that one quite pleased so far. Now you can see it's just a load of standard brushes in there, so I'm gonna pull them out one by one. these two out together. Oh, it's three. <laughs> okay, and compressed a little bit, but again, man, how clean that. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. So at the minute, no evidence of like really bad sort of build up in the filtration system, which I'm quite pleased about. Yeah, okay, I've just taken these off. These cover the uh, one inch, two inch outlets, which is just gravity fed straight back into the pond. Uh, but again, a little bit of weed build up, but not completely gunked up. Admittedly, I do clean these, clean these more often because they're just much more accessible. And the plants, look at that. A little bit of mud at the bottom, yes, but lovely fibrous root system. That's what takes out all the ammonia uh, and all the nitrite. Really, really good. It smells amazing. Oh, look at that one. <laughs> That's just gone on its side and then grown out of the top like that. But again, fantastic, brilliant fibrous root system. Does the job for you. Now what you can see is that is the inlet from the pump from here through this little bulkhead. It goes to a T, that is a screw cap. And that is if we get a clog in this pipe system, I can unscrew that, put down a hose, whatever I want, you know, uh, just a pipe or whatever, just to try and get to unblock it, but I haven't had to use it yet. And then you can see it descends 90 degrees down to the bottom of this chamber, which is completely lined. Okay, I'm gonna empty that out now and you can see it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna 
suck out the water of both of these. And I've got a Pondo Mac, which I'll show you now. I think it's a fantastic bit of kit. But take the water out and it also take out all the silt at the bottom. If there is any, I'm sure there is. We get to see how much. Yeah, so Pondomatic, Pontec, was it 1400 watt? Uh, and, it's, and it's designed for ponds. It's designed for sort of sludgy bases in ponds. And it, um, it's really quite robust and it sucks all that stuff out. Good thing about it, in my mind, that material that's gonna be at the bottom of that pond that we're about to suck out, really, really rich in nutrients and fantastic for your garden. If you're that way inclined, as you can see, I am. So the outflow is gonna go there to this quite significant flower bed that I've got, got on the edge of this pond. So none of it's gonna to go to waste. All right, but let's get on with it. Oh yeah, get that stuff. Drop the mic in the pond. Still has a little green light on it. I don't know if it's working, but still. Back on, posterity. So yeah, so you know what, really pleased with that. Um, like I said, about an inch of stuff at the bottom, really not that bad. That's six months worth of stuff. It's six months worth of stuff that isn't in the pond. It's in there. And not only that, it's not clogging up the pipe work. It's not causing problems for the pump. And it's not evidently completely filling up these brushes and making them awfully uh, dirty and nasty. So for my money, it's doing its job. What do you think? So I'm gonna do the same for the plant filter bay. I just felt through. It has a little bit of sediment at the bottom of it, actually a little bit more uh, than this filter bay, but I'm less worried about that one because it just gravity feeds through there, so it's not going to interfere with any pipe work or the pump. But I'm going to clear it out anyway. Right, so that's both of them. Now hoovered out, nice clean bottoms. So it's time to rebuild it. And you can see how simple it was. One piece of pipe work, some brushes, and some plants. So these, giving them a nice dunk in the water. Most of them are pretty much generally good anyway. So I'm just gonna put them back in. Well, that couldn't have been any easier. That, twice a year. It's what, 10 minutes, tops. Put the pump on, get it all flowing again. I'll get a nice close up so you can see the water rising through the main filter bay into the plant bay up and then through into the um, two inch returns. I think it's so quiet. I think it is filling it up, but I just can't hear it. No, it wasn't filling up me being stupid. Doesn't happen very often, to be honest. So while this is this is happening, you know, these are just two filter bays. They could be they could be boxes, they could be plastic boxes, metal boxes, you could build it out of stone if you want to, like I have, and line it with some of the pet spare plastic liner from the pond. But it's not expensive, right? You can quickly see a cheap way of doing that. Now, what does an easy pod cost you? you know, going rate, I think it's about 500 pounds these days or more. And that doesn't include any of the sort of ancillaries and all the bits and bobs. And I would offer that you have to clean it a lot more often. And that you don't get the volume of filtration that I've got here. And what about a Nexus? Nexus 220, these are, these are great filters, by the way. I'm certainly not knocking them as products. Uh, if it's what you need, and if it's, it's the kind of thing that you want, and you want to have a big filter house and big filter bay, fill your boots. But uh, you know, but they are expensive. You know, you're laying out well over a thousand just for the unit. And one of an, an obvious criticism would be that okay, well, Tom, this is a small pond, right? This is less than ten thousand liters. Yes, it is. I would um, immediately push back 
on any sort of criticisms about the the size of the pool, the size of the pond. I'm sorry, and and how uh, you know it wouldn't work with a bigger pond and a bottom drain and all that sort of stuff because I've done it with a twenty five thousand liter plunge pool uh, over there with a bottom drain and it works exactly like this. So now you can see the water has got to the point where it's flowed over the top and now it's gravity feeding into the plant bay. So now it's got to the point where it's filled up through the main filter bay just there. And it's not just gravity feeding into the plant bay, that's all it's doing. And it will fill that up. I've got a small aerator in there, which I don't use all the time, but I can if I want to. So all those really wonderful, fibrous, uh, nutrient-hungry roots from those plants that I showed you, well, they're in contact with that water all the time. And they're sucking out the ammonia. Tiny little bit sediment sedimenty as it's sort of just settling itself down. But then I've got that last stage filter, if you can see properly. There you go. Where that thermometer is. So those cover the one inch to two inch returns. It gives you that tiny last little bit of protection, which is fantastic. Now I'm going to slowly start to return into the pond. I'll show you that. You can see it there, just underneath that lintel. That's where the two two inch returns go into with a 90 on. So you would think that gravity feeding water back at really not much of a differential in terms of level wouldn't provide that much flow but it does so there you have it procedure complete obviously i need to top up the pond uh, very slowly through a carbon filter which i'll do it's just a little attachment on the end of the uh, on the end of the hose uh, but that won't take long at all so what was that 15 minutes i would say so i'll do that twice a year half an hour a year water quality i test maybe once a week, once every two weeks, a little bit more often in the summer. It has never, ever given me any problems. The levels have always been perfect. And I've got another video to show you that using an API master test kit. So, proof's in the pudding. Water's good, water's clear, the fish are happy, and it tests brilliantly. And I only have to clean it twice a year. So you tell me, if you wanna spend all that money on a Nexus or an EasyPod, again, good products. Good products for the right pond or you want to build one yourself. I don't know which one I want to do. Happy building. Out.